So peak performance is actually wired into our DNA. Yeah, we can use our internal biological clocks to help us to come up with the best routines for us, whether that's your nighttime routine, your morning routine, and more specifically for us, your study routine. So I've looked all over the internet and looked at all sorts of research papers to find out what is the best study routine, no matter what you're studying. So in this video, I'm going to be giving you guys 10 tips on how to make the perfect study routine according to research. So at the end of this video, I'm actually going to be sharing with you guys a study routine that I have created using these 10 tips that I'm going to be sharing with you in this video today. And on top of that, I'm actually going to be also doing a giveaway with Ken Hub, which is a learning platform. If you're studying biology, if you're studying histology, if you're studying anatomy, I'm going to be doing a giveaway at the end of this video, giving two of you guys a free one month premium subscription to Ken Hub so you can try it for yourself. So if you're interested in finding out what the perfect study routine is, and also if you're interested in entering the giveaway, then please watch to the end of this video. So. Hi guys, sorry, how rude of me, I did not introduce myself. <laughs> if you're new to this channel, my name is Nella and I am a recently graduated doctor. I did six years of medical school and before that I have a bachelor's degree in biomedical sciences and in both my degrees I managed to get a first class degree which is the highest you can get if you're not from the UK and you don't understand our class system. So throughout my career in university, I was studying how to study. Like I really, really enjoy learning about learning, like how to best optimize your learning, how to best, you know, work at your peak. Because I juggled a lot of things. I was doing YouTube part-time. I was also doing other businesses part-time as well as studying a medical degree. So I needed to optimize my time. I needed to optimize my productivity. And I also needed to optimize my studying, which is what led me to studying about studying. So this is why I share this information with you guys because it has worked for me. It's allowed me to get 100% in most of my medical school um, exams, especially when I started to implement some of these things. So I just wanna share with you guys what I've learned so that we can both excel in all aspects of life that we're trying to excel in. So number one is, what is the best time to study? I know that we're all different, right? Some people are morning people, some people are night people, and we're all very different. And that's what's so good about research is sometimes, you know, we can't find a one size fits all to everyone. That's why people are uniquely made, right? And when you, we're also unique that not everything that works for someone else is going to work for you. So just know that even though a lot of these things are evidence-based, it doesn't mean that you have to follow every single one, make it work for you. Which is why I love this first tip because research shows that there's actually two different times, time periods throughout your day that you are most optimum for learning. And this is the times where your brain is actually in acquisition mode. And this means that your brain is ready to acquire new information. And studies show that these are two different times. The first time period is between 10 a.m. to 2 p.m. And the second time period is between 4 p.m. to 10 p.m. So the in these two periods of times, your brain is in acquisition mode, which means that it's going to acquire new, new information quicker, better, and allow you to study at your optimum. So if you're a morning person, then that's fantastic. You can study in the morning between 10 a.m. to 2 p.m. And if you're an evening person, that's great. You can probably start later around 6 p.m. to 10 p.m. And you're using your brain biology and you're using your physiology to help work with you and not against you. Because especially if you're a student, a lot of people tend to do you know all-nighters. And actually the least effective time to study according to research is between 4 a.m. and 7 a.m. So when you're studying and doing all-nighters, if you're working up super early in the morning, m most likely you're actually not working with your biology with your physiology you're actually working against it of course like i said not all one size fits all but this is what research says are the best and worst times to study that's tip number one so the second tip is consistency 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 if you study at the same time research shows that your brain will actually be able to get into study mode quicker and therefore you're not going to waste time um, trying to get yourself in the zone and all that stuff the more consistent you are by studying at the same time the easier it is for you to study and the easier it is for you to get into your study mode and actually learn faster so if you have figured out the time that you want to study whether it's in the morning or it's in the evening try to do that consistently 
and at the same time because you have internal clocks for example you have internal circadian rhythms for example right you if you go to sleep at the same time you wake up at the same time you could probably let go of your alarm and your body is naturally going to wake up at that time because it is now in rhythm it is now in a consistent cycle this can still happen as well when it comes to your studying. If you're consistent in studying at the same time, your brain almost gets ready to start studying at that time every single day in the same way it gets ready to wake up at the same time every single day. So try studying at the same time every single day and that will really optimize your learning time and it also will optimize your studying. So the third tip, which I'm not gonna lie, when I found this out, I was a bit like hurt a little bit in the middle because I was like, <laughs> Because I'm always telling you guys to get iPads, right? iPad, 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 and talk about it all the time. But the third tip, according to research, to optimize your study routine is to actually learn with print. So that means your hardback or paperback, whatever, books, textbooks, reading. Reading will help you to study better and to study more effectively, but specifically to acquire new information. So basically, research shows that people who use um, electronics to start learning something new tend to have to repeat that information more times in order for it to stick to the, in their brains than people who use textbooks so you can use your textbooks for example your print to learn new information and then you can carry on with your learning process using your laptop or your ipad or whatever tablets that you're using after so you can use them both but just start off with print the fourth way that you can optimize your study routine is using music um, I know some of you would be like, absolutely not. I hate listening to music when I'm studying because it distracts me and all these things. But actually, evidence suggests that there is certain music that can help you to optimize your concentration, your memory, which means your retention ability. And that is specifically classical music. So classical music actually activates parts of your brain that helps you to retain more information, to remember more information. So which is really good because if you use classical music in the background when you're studying, you'll be able to actually work with your brain in order for you to concentrate and be alert and stay focused on that one thing and then also be able to remember more information. So if you're not opposed to using music, then definitely try using that in your study routine because evidence says it might help you. Okay, so the fifth tip is to exercise. Yes, exercise. So our bodies obviously function with blood flow, with oxygen, we need energy, we need oxygen, and all these things in order for us to function at our best. But specifically your brain, your brain actually takes about 50% off the energy that you absorb through your food. It is a high functioning organ. It really needs a lot of energy. So if it needs a lot of energy, it means that it needs a lot of blood for it, it needs a lot of oxygen. And exercise will help pump your blood all around your body, but specifically get more blood to your brain and therefore help you to be more alert, help you to concentrate more, which will allow you to study better and actually help you in your study process. So evidence suggests that you can try to exercise uh, and do high intensity exercise that will allow you to get that blood pumping quickly and obviously not tire you out. So you don't wanna be tired, but you just wanna get that kind of you know quick energy boost. So doing this about an hour before you start studying has been found to help you to be able to study better. Okay, so the sixth tip on how to make the perfect study routine is about how you actually study. You guys know, I go on about this so much, right? Like I'm sure, I'm sure that you're probably really tired of me talking about this, but it's active recall, right? I know it's like the thing that everybody and their mama has been talking about for like the last three years, but it's because it works. It really does work. And that is because you are, again, working with your body, working with your biology and not against it. If you don't know what active recall is and you've been living under a study rock, then I don't know what to tell you. <laughs> no, I'm only joking. Active recall is basically a principle of efficient learning. And what it does is it actively stimulates your memory during the le learning process. And that is by asking questions, by doing flashcards and by doing practice questions instead of passively learning, like by just writing notes and highlighting and things like that. So the more you activate your brain, the more you work your brain during the learning process, the more likely you're going to remember information and therefore the more likely you're going to have obviously more better grades and a better learning process because if you can remember more, that means you can actually pass your exams and things like that. So actually this leads me on to my seventh tip. And this is another study system. It's called the Leitner system and it's made by the founder of it who is Sebastian Leitner so basically what he suggests is that you are uh, repeat the information that you know the least and he has a whole method where you have like a box with flashcards and you put the things that you don't know 
you know, or you know least at the front of the box and you put the things that you know most at the back of the box. And then when you're studying, you start at the front of the box. If you know something, if you, you know, it's a flashcard. If you know it, you put it at the back. If you don't know it, you keep it at the front. That way, the more you're studying, you're going to be studying more of the things you don't know um, and less of the things that you do know. And this also uses that principle of space repetition, which we're going to talk about in a second. So the eighth method, which I've already mentioned, is spaced repetition. So just like active recall, spaced repetition is one of those things that um, you will have heard of so many times. And it's basically based on the forgetting curve. If you don't know what the forgetting curve is, it's about how quickly you forget something after the first time that you've acquired it as a new, as new information. And research suggests that actually within 24 hours of learning something new, if you don't go over it within 24 hours, you're going to forget about 80% of the information that you learn. That's why in my study methods, like even in my study routine, I always tell you guys to do your active recall the day after you learn a lecture because you're more likely going to forget it if you don't go over it the next day. So if you watch my study routine, I go into detail in my personal study routine and how I use active recall and safe space repetition and my algorithm and things like that in this video that you can watch here. Um, I've been told that it's one of the best videos that a lot of you guys have watched because I really go into detail and I don't, you know, do all the fluff uh, and I show you how I study. So in that video, I talk about space repetition and things like that. And if you use um, a lot of learning apps like Ken Hub, like I mentioned before, Quizlet, um, Boss, um, Anki, all of those apps, they use out space repetition algorithms in them to allow you to review information that you don't know at certain time periods. So you don't have to like start thinking, oh my gosh, how am I going to make my own algorithm? <laughs> if you just use learning apps, it will help you to do that already. Okay, so the ninth tip, we're nearly there, we're nearly at the end, <laughs> but the ninth tip is to not overdo it. Don't overlearn. Listen, your brain gets tired. Like, you know, newsflash, you get tired. And I know sometimes it can be very tempting, especially if you're getting answers right, right? Like that adrenaline and those endorphins, you feel good. You're like, yeah, I'm on a roll. So you want to keep studying, um, said no student ever. <laughs> but sometimes it happens when you want to keep studying or you think that if I study 10 consecutive hours a day, um, that's going to help me to, you know, like, I don't know, you think the more you're working, the more you're going to learn or something like that. But actually don't overdo it because research suggests that you actually can only really concentrate on a specific task for about 50 to 90 minutes at a time, which means you need a break every 50 to 90 minutes. So I would suggest that you don't overlearn, spend about an hour to an hour and a half learning something and, they, and then take 15 minute break in between each hour. And then every two to three hours, you take longer breaks of about half an hour to an hour if you really need that time. Help your brain and put the pen down, okay? Just, just walk away. It's okay. It's okay. <laughs> okay, guys. So the 10th and final tip that I would suggest to you guys is to stop multitasking. I used to be one of those people, I will just admit it right now and say, I used to be one of those people that like would say, oh, I'm such a great multitasker. Like it's, I'm just amazing because I really thought multitasking was being productive. I was like, yeah, I can do like four things at the same time, but that is completely against research. Like research after research after research shows that when we multitask, we actually minimize our productivity because it takes us longer to do the tasks that we're doing. So if I'm, for example, cooking whilst I'm reading something, it actually takes me longer to finish both of those tasks than it would if I just focused on one task, finished it, and then went on to the next one. So don't multitask. Put your, all your distractions away. I talk about this all the time. Put your phone away. Use apps that will help you, like those um, Flora apps or whatever they're called, where if you touch your phone, you will kill an, a, a plant or something like that. That will help you to just concentrate on your studying for that hour, for that hour and a half, and then you can do, some, do something else in your breaks. So don't multitask. Just stop doing that, okay? Don't do it. <laughs> So guys, that is my 10 tips on how to make the perfect study routine according to research. There is so much more like I could have given you in this video, trust me, but I just thought I would give you the 10 ones that I thought would help the most. And with that, I've actually made a study routine that I am um, using these tips that I think will really help you if maybe you don't know how to make your own study routine. And I will insert that study routine here. This is just an example, sample study routine. Obviously, like I said at the beginning of the video, you can use these tips 
to you know implement them in your life in a way that makes the most sense for you depending on your routine and whatever you do but this is just a sample study routine that you can use in order for you to try and you know start trying to study effectively i'm also going to put this study routine in the comments down below and i'm going to pin it so you can try it for yourself um, because if I go into it and start explaining why I said this, that would make this video like an hour long and ain't nobody got time. Okay. You have to go do other things and I have to go do other things. So we don't want this video to be like all day. So yeah, that is the study routine that I would suggest for you guys. So guys, I thank you so much for watching to this point of the video if you made it this far or if you just skipped to this point of the video because you just want the giveaway that's okay too boo i ain't judging you <laughs> it's okay um i am doing a giveaway with ken hub to give two of you guys a month subscription of their premium subscription ken hub is amazing it's what i still use to this day to learn anatomy and radiology and i want to gift that to two of you if you want to be in with the chance of winning this giveaway then comment below and let me know what time you like to study are you a morning person are you an evening person because i would really like to know because i tend to be an evening person when it comes to studying so comment below what time you like to study and also your instagram handle and i will catch you there thank you guys so much for watching this video i appreciate you i hope that you enjoyed it if you made it this far and you're not subscribed then please consider clicking the subscribe button so that you don't miss any more videos otherwise i will see you guys on my next video on monday bye